I do have a, um, a separate video on my the battery dies, guys. I do have a video that's just like, like the blood video where it's just the slides and I'm drawing on them. It's about capillary exchange because it's just confusing and you need some time with it. So there is a video that's just that if it ends up dying on us. Okay, so we're talking about capillary exchange, right? things leaving the blood. When we drop things off to go to the tissues or we pick them up from the tissues, just things moving in and out of the bloodstream. Diffusion occurs, right? That's just things moving from high concentration to low concentration. Whatever path they take to get in and out of the blood, they're going from high concentration to low concentration. Now we're talking about filtration and reabsorption. We said that both of these occur in the capillary bed, which, what do we call it when we push stuff out of the capillary? What do we call it when we take stuff back in? Good, so filtration is out, reabsorption is back in. And we said that these are driven by hydrostatic pressure and osmotic pressure. But we made it really simple. We just said hydrostatic pressure pushing out, osmotic pressure is pulling in, and it's not nearly that simple. Okay, so we're gonna talk through each of the factors that goes into this. Don't let it get confusing. It's going to, but try not to let it, try to just like understand major concepts because it's essentially what we just said, but trying to make it sound complicated when it's really not. So just follow it with me. We'll, we'll pull it all together at the end, I promise. So it's not just the hydrostatic pressure in the capillary that's pushing out that's important. It's the net hydrostatic pressure, or the total overall hydrostatic pressure. Because remember, we look at this vessel, and there's blood, and the blood that's in here, the fluid, is pushing out on the vessel, right? But remember, out here, there's interstitial fluid. That fluid exerts pressure too, right? So there is some pressure that's pushing back in. And we care about the net, right? Or the difference between the two, the overall pressure. If this was, if we had, whatever, four units pushing out and four units pushing in, well, there's no net hydrostatic pressure pushing out, right? So we, we care about the difference or the overall. If I have four units pushing out and only one pushing back in, well, now that's important, right? Now I have a net pressure pushing out of three units. Is that okay? So we care about the net pressure. When we're looking at the net hydrostatic or the total hydrostatic pressure, we're gonna look at capillary hydrostatic pressure um, do you think that that's going to push, drive filtration out of the blood or pull back into the blood? Capillary hydrostatic pressure, the hydrostatic pressure of the blood. Out, right? That pushes out of the blood. And then we also have to look at interstitial fluid hydrostatic pressure. Is that going to be pushing out of the blood or back in? In. All right, back into the blood. So that kind of counteracts filtration or slows down that filtration. We combine the two. What we see is that the, the, um, the capillary hydrostatic pressure is much higher than the interstitial fluid hy hydrostatic pressure. This makes sense, right? The blood is pushing all, or the heart is pushing all that blood forward under high pressure. So there's more pressure in the capillaries than there is out in our tissues. Because of that, um, the net hydrostatic pressure tends to push fluid out of capillaries and into interstitial fluid. What do we call that when we push them out? Good, filtration. Okay, so the net hydrostatic pressure favors filtration. We do the same thing with the osmotic pressure. Remember, osmotic pressure or osmotic pull just exists because of solutes, right? The more solutes or stuff you have in the fluid, the more the osmotic pressure is. And we tend to pull water towards the solution with more solutes, with more stuff in it. Now, we mentioned the blood colloid osmotic pressure, right? We said that when we have all these plasma proteins that can't get filtered out, they're stuck in the blood. That's a lot of stuff in the blood. That makes the blood, gives the blood a really high osmotic pressure. So that tends to pull fluids back in. But the thing is, that's not the only osmotic pressure that exists, right? Out here, the interstitial fluid also has solutes, so it also has an osmotic pressure. So we have to look at the difference between the two. 
just like we did with hydrostatic pressure. So we'll look at the blood colloid osmotic pressure in the blood, and we'll look at the interstitial fluid colloid osmotic pressure in the interstitial fluid. What we tend to see is that the net or overall osmotic pressure pulls water and solutes back into the capillary. What did we call that? Reabsorption. So just know that while we kind of focus on hydrostatic pressure pushing out and osmotic pressure pulling back in, there are a lot of factors in play here. There's a lot going on. So when we're looking at this, what we, we kind of combine all of these factors together, the capillary pressure, um, hydrostatic pressure, the interstitial fluid hydrostatic pressure, and then the blood and interstitial fluid colloid osmotic pressure, we combine all four of those together and we get something called the net filtration pressure. Because again, all four of these things are happening at the same time, right? You always, in the, the capillary, have pressure pushing out you always have pressure pushing back in. You always have solutes dissolved in the interstitial fluid. You always have solutes dissolved in the blood. Like these things are always occurring simultaneously at the same time. So when we combine all of them, we get the net filtration pressure. And it's this net filtration pressure that ultimately is gonna tell us, or is gonna cause materials to move out of the blood or to move back into the blood. So when we look at that again, we're looking at the difference between the net hydrostatic pressure, so net filtration pressure, difference between net hydrostatic pressure, right, that's that one, capillary hydrostatic minus interstitial fluid hydrostatic. So hydrostatic pushing out minus pushing in. And then here you see the net osmotic pressure. So blood colloid osmotic pressure and the interstitial fluid colloid osmotic pressure. If this number, that you come up with is positive. Okay, so your net filtration pressure, the net pressure that's pushing out is positive. That means filtration is going to occur. If your net filtration pressure is negative, that means reabsorption is going to occur. Right, we don't have any pressure pushing out anymore. We've got the opposite. We're actually suctioning back in. Is that okay so far? Kind of? Okay, we have a picture that we'll look at in a second after I go over this last little point here and we'll talk through it again. If all of the like acronyms and the really long names make it more confusing than it really is, it's really not confusing at all. It just seems scary on the surface. So we said that this capillary exchange, right? This pushing of things in and out of the bloodstream happens because of this net filtration pressure, right? So we have a positive pressure pushing out to filter. We have a negative pressure pulling back in to reabsorb. Well, if we look at the capillary bed, net filtration pressure is not constant. It's not like we have the same net filtration pressure all the way across the capillary bed. It changes, it actually kind of gradually changes and reverses as we go through the capillary bed. So say, I'm trying to remember how the picture is, what side. I always draw it this way. So say this is the artery side, right? Blood's going into the capillary bed. And then over here is the venule side where the blood is leaving the capillary bed. Okay, so the blood is flowing in this direction. At the beginning of the capillary bed, at the arterial side when we first go in, we see that the hydrostatic pressure is high. Which way is the hydrostatic pressure pushing? Out, right? The capillary hydrostatic pressure is pushing out of the blood, right? Remember, that's just the force of the fluid that's pushing out on the vessel walls. So that capillary hydrostatic pressure is really high in the beginning. Um, and the colloid osmotic pressure isn't very high. So what we end up with is a really positive net filtration pressure. What did we say that a positive net filtration pressure favors? What does that cause to happen? Filtration. filtration, right? So that's what we see happening at the artery end. When we first enter the capillary bed, filtration occurs. The net filtration pressure is positive. 
the greatest force is pushing out. So that overcomes everything else and we push out of the blood and into the interstitial fluid. The fluid moves out of the capillary and into the interstitial fluid. But the stuff doesn't stay stagnant, right? As we move down the capillary bed, we're losing a bunch of fluid, right? What gets trapped in the capillary bed though, or in the blood? Plasma proteins. Plasma proteins are big solutes, right? So we have all of these really big solutes that stay in the blood and we lose a bunch of fluid. So the concentration is getting pretty heavy as we move down to the end of the capillary bed. And what we see is that at the second